Okay, let's go ahead and talk about gas laws. Now, gas laws, these are laws that help understand and predict the behaviors of gases in specific situations. And there are four different gas laws. Gas law number one is Boyle's law. And Boyle's law is P1 V1 equals P2 V2. P is pressure, V is volume, one indicates initial, and two indicates final. With these gas laws, we're, con we're going to be comparing changes within these variables of a gas. So Boyle's law, we're comparing the pressure changes and volume changes. Now this law, this equation, reflects an inverse proportion. Inverse means opposite. So if one goes up, other goes down. So if pressure goes up of a gas, our volume's going to go down. Or if pressure goes down, our volume is going to go up. And with an inverse proportion, it is going to indicate a graph that kind of looks like this if we kind of do data. So looking at an example of Boyle's law, we have a container. Now, if we are increasing the volume, so increasing the lib of our container, there is more space, more surface area um, for our particles to move around. Therefore, we're going to have less collisions going on. That's why our pressure decreases. Now, if we're kind of decreasing the volume, so pushing our lid more inside the container, there's less surface area, less room for our particles to move. So they're going to be colliding a lot more. That's why our pressure increases. Our next gas law is Charles' law. Now, uh, Charles' law is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. We got volume, initial volume, and temperature is T, initial temperature, equals final volume over final temperature. And this shows a direct proportion. Direct means the same. So in this case, if volume goes up, temperature goes up. Or when volume goes down, temperature goes down. And for our direct proportion, we're gonna, if we're doing some data gathering, our graph is going to look like this. So looking at our car tires, in the summertime, our temperature is really high. That means what happens is our, temp is our tires get bigger. That's why sometimes you may need to let out air from your tires because they're kind of getting too big because when temperature goes up, volume goes up. And we'll see why that means in the next uh, gas law. Winter time, temperature is really cold, so our tires are going to get smaller. Our volume is going to decrease. So sometimes you're going to have to add more air to your tire in the winter time. Our next gas law is gay sachs law. And that's pressure, pre initial pressure over initial temperature equals final uh, pressure over final temperature. Now, this equation looks just like um, Charles' law. It's just different variables, so it's going to be a direct proportion. So when pressure goes up, temperature goes up, and when pressure goes down, temperature goes down. And again, that same graph idea for a direct proportion. So we see this in pressure cookers. We talked about pressure cookers before. For it to cook food, all it's doing is you're increasing pressure inside, which is increasing the temperature. Going back to the idea of our car, of our car tires. If the if it's super hot outside, our pressure is increasing, our collisions are increasing. So if our collisions are increasing, it's going to be pushing out the tire more, making that volume go big. That's why that volume increases when temperature increases. And that same idea when it's colder out. <coughs> Our next and last gas law is Avogadro's law. You probably already heard about Avogadro's law earlier on in chemistry, which is Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. This person also has their own gas law, which is volume, initial volume over amount of substance, amount of gas, N is moles, initial one, equals uh final volume over amount of gas final, so moles. And again, looks just like Charles and Gala Sachs, so it has a direct proportion. So when volume goes up, the amount of gas goes up, and when volume goes down, the amount of gas goes down. And again, that same idea with graph. And looking at this is like blowing up a balloon. The more air, the more particles, the more moles you're putting into a balloon, the balloon is going to get bigger. And if you're de deflating a balloon, if you're releasing those particles, you're releasing the moles out of the balloon, so the volume of the balloon gets smaller.
Now, all four gas laws can be combined to form one equation, and that equation is called the combined gas law. So we have P1V1 over N1T1 equals P2V2 over N2T2. And this can be used to complete gas law calculations. Now, this combined gas law equation will be given to you on any assessment that we will have. You don't need to memorize that one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some practice problems of gas law calculations. Problem number one says the pressure of oxygen gas rises from 786 millimeters of mercury to 241.4 kilopascals. If the initial temperature is 360 Kelvin, what is the final temperature? So with these gas law problems, you're always going to be given three numbers with the unit, and then it's going to tell you to solve for another uh, variable. So in this problem, we are given 786 millimeters of mercury. We are given 241.4 kilopascals and 360 uh, Calvin, and the problem is asking us to solve for final temperature. So looking at our first circle of 786, millimeters of mercury is a unit of pressure. This is also our first listed pressure, so this variable is actually going to be P1, pressure 1, initial pressure. Our next circle, kilopascals, is also a unit of pressure, but this is our second pressure listed, so it's actually going to be P2, our final pressure. 360 Kelvin is temperature. This is our first temperature given, so it's going to be T1, our initial temperature. And the problem asking us to find our final temperature, which is T2, since, T, since 2 is final. So now that we have all that, what I also like to do is I like to build a, a chart, a table. I'm going to divide it in half and split it into four. And we have one, two, and then P, V, N, T. And from there, everything that we circled, we're going to go ahead and fill in the table of what we have. Our pressure one, we have 786 mmHg. Pressure two, we have 241.4 kilopascals. Our temperature one is 360K and we don't know our temperature too. Now for all of these problems, it's always gonna be associated with the combined gas law. So let's go to write that out. And if you notice in our table, we are not given anything for volume or moles, so we're going to actually X that out. And we're going to X that out as well on our combined gas law. Because what's left over is just pressure and temperature 1 and 2. That was the equation we're going to use. Now, before we can go ahead and plug in anything into our equations, we need to make sure our pressure units are the same. Our pressure one is in millimeters of mercury. Our pressure two is in kilopascals. They are not the same, so we have to do a pressure conversion. I can either convert millimeters of mercury to kPa or kPa to millimeters of mercury. It does not matter which one you choose. And since we are doing our pressure conversions, let's go ahead and rewrite that one ATM equals 101.3 kilopascals equals uh, 760 millimeters of mercury. What I'm going to do for this problem is I'm going to convert the 241.4 kilopascals to millimeters of mercury. So we have 241.4 kilopascals and we are converting this to millimeters of mercury. Since we want to get to millimeters of mercury, millimeters of mercury is going to be on the top. 
And since we don't want kilopascals anymore, that's going to go on the bottom. Looking at our sequence, we have 760 for millimeters of mercury and 101. 0.3 goes with kilopascals. We have kilopascals twice, so we cancel it out. So we are good to calculate it. We just multiply the top and divide the bottom. So if I do that on the calculator, I would do 241.4 times 760 divided by 101.3, and my calculator gives me 1,000 811 millimeters of mercury. This is what we are going to plug in for temperature 2. We are not going to be using the 241.4. Now, looking at our temperature, our temperature 1 is going to be Kelvin. That means we need to solve for temperature 2, so our unit for our answer is going to be Kelvin. And now we're good to go in and plug in everything that we know. Our pressure one is 786. Our temperature one is 360. Our pressure two is what we just converted to, the 1,811. And we need to solve for our temperature. Now, we have a fraction equals a fraction and we need to solve for temperature two. So it's gonna be a two-step basic algebra problem. Our first step that we're gonna to wanna to do is we are going to want to cross multiply. So we're gonna get 360 times the 1,811 equals the 706 and temperature two. And again, the last step of our basic algebra step for this one to get T2 by itself is we're going to divide that 786 to both sides of our equation. So this side that cancels. And then when we plug this into the calculator, we're just going to take 360 times the 1811 divided by 786. And this gives us that our temperature 2 is going to be 829. We just said our unit for our answer is going to be Kelvin. Now you can round however you want to round for these gas law calculations. Um, and I, if you are around that correct number, just because you round a little bit different, that's going to be okay. And that is the answer for problem number one. Okay, let's go ahead and do another problem of these uh, gas law calculations. I have already made the table and rewrote the combined gas law equation because we're going to be needing this to solve for all of our gas law calculations problems. Problem number two says the volume of chlorine gas drops from 1.45 liters to 3.80 liters. If the initial amount of gas is 1.70 moles, what is the final amount of gas? Again, let's go ahead and circle all of the numbers that we know and their units. So we have 1.45 liters. Liters is volume. This is our first volume given, so it's going to be volume one. Then we have 3.80 liters. Now this is going to be volume two, since so this is our second volume given, because liters is volume. Then we are given 1.70 moles. Moles is N. This is our first mole given, so it's going to be N1. And the problem is asking us to solve for the final amount of gas. That is referring to our N variable, and this is going to be N2. So that we now that we know all our variables, let's go ahead and fill those in to our table. So our volume 1 is 1.45 liters. Then we have for volume two is 3.80 liters. Mole one is 1.70 mole, and we don't know our mole two. Now, first thing right off the bat, we are not given anything for pressure and anything for temperature. So we're gonna cross that on our table and our combined gas law. We don't have anything for pressure or temperature. Therefore, that V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2 is what we're going to use to solve this problem for equation-wide. 
Now we got to make sure our units are the same. Okay, so looking at our volume, we have liters and liters. We're good with that. Now, our mole, our N1 is mole. That means when we get our answer, our unit has to be in mole as well because the units have to be the same within the variable. So now that is all good, we are going to go ahead and plug in everything now into our problem. Our V1 is 1.45. Our N1 is 1.70. Our V2 is, is, sorry about that, is 3.80, and we don't know our N2. The same basic algebra steps we did in problem one also applies to problem number two. We're just gonna cross multiply and then we're gonna divide. So let's cross multiply first. So we get 1.70, 3.80 equals 1.45, and then N2. And then we're going to divide the both sides. So the 1.45 cancels. And then when, so we plug this in the calculator by doing 1.7 times 3.8 divided by 1.45 and we get 4.46 and we just said our unit for our answer is going to be mole. Now this one we didn't need to do any unit conversion or anything like that because our variable units were the same and that is your final answer for problem number two. All right, let's go ahead and do problem number three. Again, I already wrote the our table and our combined gas law equation, because again, we're gonna use those for our gas law calculations. So the temperature of hydrogen gas rises from 18 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. If the initial volume of the gas is 2.75 liters, what is the final volume? So again, let's go ahead and circle our three givens and figure out their variables. We have 18 degrees Celsius. Obviously, that is temperature. That is the first temperature given, so we have T1. Now we have 70, uh, uh, 45 degrees Celsius. Again, that is temperature. Second temperature given, so it's going to be T2. 2.75 liters. Liters is volume. First volume given, so it's going to be V1. And the problem is asking us to find our final volume, which is going to be volume 2. So let's go ahead and fill that into our table. And we need to find volume two. Now, right off the bat, we have no pressure and no moles. So we're going to go and cancel all that out as well as in our combined gas law equation. So we're left with the volume one, temperature one, volume two, temperature two. Now we gotta make sure our units are good. Yes, temperature, they're both Celsius, but when we do gas law calculations, we can never plug in degrees Celsius numbers. We have to always convert to Kelvin. So even though both units are degrees Celsius, we still need to convert both of them to Kelvin. And to go from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, we just add 273. So when we do those in our calculator, our first one is 291 Kelvin, and then our second one is 318 Kelvin. So we're no longer going to be using these as our temperatures. This is our new temperature one, and this is our new temperature two when we plug into our equation. Now, Volume one unit is liters. That means our answer is going to be in liters. So now we are good to go in and plug in what we have. So we have 2.75 over the 291. We don't know our volume two. And then our temperature two is 318. Again, fraction equals a fraction. So it's the exact two step basic algebra that we're going to have to do that we've done in the past two problems. 
first step, we are going to cross multiply. And then to get V2 by itself, we are going to divide that 291 to both sides. And then when we plug this into the calculator, we would do 2.75 times 318 divided by 291, and we get 3 liters as our answer. All right, let's go and do problem number four. So we have the pressure, and again, the table in the combined gas law equation is on there because we're gonna use it again. The pressure of the nit nitrogen gas drops from 315 kilopascals to 311 atm. If the initial volume of the gas is 1.4 liters, what is the final volume? Let's go ahead and circle and label our variables. So we have 315 kPa, that's pressure, first pressure given, so we have pressure one, they have 3.11 atm. That's our next pressure, so it's pressure two. 1.4 liters, that is volume one. And final volume, we are solving for volume two. So let's go ahead and plug in everything that we, that we know into our table. Right off the bat, we don't have any moles and we don't have any temperatures, so it's going to cancel that in our table and our combined gas law. And now we have to make sure our units are good. Now our pressure units, they are different. We have kilopascals and ATM, so we're going to have to do a pressure conversion. I can either convert KPA to ATM or ATM to KPA, and again, we are going to use that sequence that 1 ATM equals 101.3. 3 kPa equals 760 millimeters of mercury. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to convert the 315 kPa to ATM. So 350 kPa. We want to get to ATM, so ATM is going to go on the top. We want to get rid of kPa, so that's at the bottom. We got one that goes with ATI, ATM, and 101 goes with KPA. KPA cancels, so we are good to calculate. So we're just going to multiply the top and divide the bottom. And when we do that, we have 315 times 1 divided by 101.3. We get 3.11 ATM. This is going to be our new pressure one. We are no longer going to be using that for our pressure one. Now, looking at our volume, our volume one is liters, therefore our answer is going to be in liters. So let's go ahead and plug in everything that we know. Pressure one is 311. Volume one is 1.4. Pressure two is 311, but we don't know our volume two. So this one actually skips the first basic algebra step we did in the last one because we're not equaling fractions. So the only step we got to do is we're going to divide the 311 to both sides. So when you plug this into the calculator, your final answer for volume two is going to be 1.4 liters. And that is your answer for number four. Okay, so go ahead and do problem number five on your own. Pause the video and when you have your answer, press play. And here's your answer. And then go ahead and do problem number six on your own. I'll pause the, vi I'll pause the video and when you have your answer, press play. And here's your answer. And that's it, guys. Thanks.